Rub up your engines! Well, the average price of an electric vehicle has dropped more than 20% because there is an oversupply now, they say, so they're having to drop their price. Well, they can talk about supply, oversupply, whatever the heck they want. People that were interested in an electric car, the people that are like first responders to an emergency, ooh, a new technology, I have to buy it, right? Well, those people have already bought electric cars. In the state of California, around 20% of the people who bought an electric car said they want to get rid of it and they don't want to get another one. People are finding out they are not convenient. The thing about it is, it's been out a little bit of time, and a lot of people are saying, hey, it's not convenient. It doesn't work out too well. Give you a perfect example. A few weeks ago, I checked out a Volvo electric car. It was the first fully electric car. They made it in 22 and 23. So, I'm checking out, and I was impressed by the car. I said, if it wasn't an electric car, gee, I might think about getting one, right? But I didn't think electric cars are long in the future. So, I looked it up. Well, they only made them in 2022 and this year, 2023. I found a whole bunch of 2022s for sale, like 25000 miles, 20,000 miles. This is a $65,000 car and the used ones, they were asking 25. Well, to ask that much less, the car that's a year old with low mileage tells you, well, the people didn't like an electric car, so now they're selling it, right? Already, they figured out it's not for them. All I have to say is, it's a bunch of nonsense. The only reason they're lowering their prices is because they can't sell them. Look at Elon. He dropped like 40 something thousand dollars the price of the Model X. Why? Nobody's buying them. And it's showing you there's going to be a real catastrophe with electric cars in the near future. Volkswagen's shutting factories down in Germany, building the ID.4 because no one's buying the stupid things. Hey, it, pretty soon it's going to come to a head and we'll see what happens. Brit Bob says. Scotty, I got an Acura 2.406. Mechanic says the ECM doesn't communicate. There's rust on the unit. There's no recalls on it. Can I get a second-end ECM? But mechanic says you're going to have to reprogram stuff. What do you think? I am not a big fan of buying used high-tech electronics. You never know, right? You're getting it from a junkyard. The junkyards are lying scumbags. For example, oh, a decade or so, I went to a junkyard in Houston. Uh, the customer wanted to use the ECM, right? So I went and they said, we reconditioned them. So I'm sitting waiting in their office and I had to wait an hour, right? And by the time they brought it to me, they brought me this ECM and I could touch it. The paint was still wet. All they did was spray paint. The old one that they found in a junkyard car in their junkyard somewhere, right? Who knows if the thing would have even worked now? If it did work, I would have had to reprogram it to make it work for the car. They are reprogrammable. But the question is, is it good or not? And there's no way anybody can really test an ECM other than plugging it into the car and seeing if the stupid thing works, right? Then it is too late. That is the problem. And these places that say they have rebuilt ones, a lot of them are just like that junkyard I went to in Houston. They rebuilt anything. Just took them out of a junkyard car and spray painted it black and said, here, look, it's all. They didn't do anything to it, right? So you're kind of in a quandary there because a new ECM for that thing would cost a small fortune, as you found out. I mean, if you want to try, if you can find anybody who's going to guarantee it, you need a guarantee. You can just get a used unit or a, in quotes, remanufactured one. Make sure there's a warranty on the thing because if there isn't, then you're just peeing in the wind and it'll probably come back and hit you in the face, right? I mean, if you can find a place with a warranty, it's worth the try. It can be reprogrammed. But buying a used one and that's what? 18 year old vehicle? Who's to say? It might have been sitting out in the rain or sitting in a humid warehouse for years and years or it might have been out of a flooded car. You don't know. Nobody knows. Keith 911 says 2010 Ford Mustang got a fuel problem. It's a V6, 200,000 miles, 2010 Mustang. It cranks when in park, but when I put in drive, it shuts off. I replace the fuel pump. Could you tell me what the problem is? All right. You can get many problems that do that. It could be your transmission's going out because when you're in park, or neutral, it's just freewheeling. As soon as you put it in drive, there's the load on the transmission, and if the torque converter inside or the tranny shot, it'll stall it out, right? A lot of times, it's a vacuum leak. You put it in drive, there's a vacuum leak sucking air, you'll have too much air, not enough fuel, 
out it goes, right? I mean, there's all kinds of reasons a car could cut. I would start by looking at a vacuum leak. Check for a vacuum leak. And of course, you know, you got to do the obvious things. You got an air filter, fuel filter. You said you change the pump, right? Did you change the filter? You got to change them in tandem. An old filter can ruin a pump from too much pressure. You put a new pump on, it'll ruin the new pump too. And look at the spark. Well, there's a lot of things can theoretically do it. Pray it's not the transmission starting to go out because it could be that too. You know, you never know. Check the obvious things first. And if you can't figure it out, guy like me could come and in 20, 30 minutes figure it out. We might run some tests and say, put your tranny going out and then you got to decide you want to put a bunch of money in the transmission on a 200,000 mile Mustang with a V6. You might not want to spend that kind of money. What you call it says, are Toyota and Honda owners switching to Tesla? A recent report by SP Global has shown that among Tesla EV vehicles sold from October 2021 to September 22, 28.6% of the buyers have come from Toyota and Honda. People lost their minds. Okay, one, to begin with, this company, SP Global, what are they? Well, they're actually an asset managing company. Listen to this. At SP Global, we provide iconic and innovative index solutions backed by unparalleled expertise across the asset class spectrum. Like they say about computers, garbage in, garbage out, okay? I wouldn't listen to anything these guys are saying to begin with. I have no idea why they're even talking about this, right? It's an asset company that analyzes values of companies and stuff, you know? Hey, maybe they got money invested in Tesla, I don't know, <laughs> but I wouldn't listen to a word of what that company says, so I'd have to throw all the stuff they're saying out the window. It would be meaningless to me, you know? Garbage in, garbage out, you know? It'd be like going to a fashion show and asking the fashion designer what he thought about nuclear fusion as a possible fuel source. It's like the people that say, J.D. Power says this is J.D. Power's is an advertising company. Would you listen to anything they said? They're an advertising company. They'll say whatever their clients tell them to say. Hey, hey, J.D. Power, say these Chryslers are great. Oh, yeah, the Chryslers, best car out there. Bye. Always make sure you find out where your information is coming from in the first place, right? Livingstone says, Scotty, my dashboard on my 2017 Honda Ridgeline lights up like a Christmas tree, emission, keyless entry, etc. What causes this? All right, here is the problem. Like a bunch of dominoes lined up, right? Yeah, one else start falling down. And unfortunately, computers work that way. If you get a critical code with a problem on your car, it will often start tripping a bunch of other codes. The classic one is if your check engine light comes on, in most older Toyotas, say the gas cap is loose, right? Automatically, with the stupid check engine light on, it will turn the ABS and this electronic speed control lights on. It's a software thing with Toyota, right? So you might find that a loose gas cap is making your ABS system shut down. That's unfortunately, they're so tied in with each other. What you do, anybody can do if they really want. Get yourself a scan tool, even a $50 one will show you something. Erase all the codes, then start the car up, drive it around a little. Quick look at the code. See what codes come back. Fix the code that comes back first because it takes a while for them all to trail. So let's say you got eight codes. Maybe only one of them will come up in the first four or five minutes of driving. That's the first culprit. And if you fix that, it could fix the whole thing. If it's not that, well, then it generally means your dash is breaking down. If you're getting all these lights coming on in your dash, it often means that the circuit board of the dash is breaking down or the circuit board inside the ECM is breaking down. Those ECMs cost a lot of money. You want to pray it's not the ECM breaking down. Pray you got one goofball code and it starts tripping them all down the line. Because let's say you say you get keyless entry problem. But if it starts, you know, your keyless entry is working, right? I mean, it's working. So that would mean something else is tripping it, not the system itself. So erase all the codes, drive it, and pray. A simple one comes up first. Carnaughty says, is the drive belt on my car safe? I got 2017 Honda Civic, and he shows me a picture. And the drive belt has two marks of a slash across and stitching. Okay, no, it's time to change your drive belt. The drive belts, of course, are not made as one piece. They're long belts, 
and then they are actually bonded and stitched together. In your case, you now see the stitching crossing across the belts like this, and there's a big black stitch line, two of them going across in different parts. That means that you've gotten down to where the stitching is, and it's time to change the belt sooner than later. You don't want to get stranded somewhere. You should not see it standing out. If you got a magnifying glass or something, look at a brand new belt closely, you could find the area where the stitching is, but it's not prominent. In this case, it's prominent. And the belt's just worn out. Change it before it pops. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.